I get asked a lot by people which softwares I think are the most important for them to invest in for their Amazon business. Because let's be real, there are so many softwares out there. And if you're subscribing to a large variety of them, that can really add up. More specifically, a lot of people want to know exactly what the Profit Guru software can do and why I rely on it. Throughout a lot of the videos on this channel, I sprinkle that software and show you how I'm using it. But in this video, I want to talk just about the Profit Guru software and take you through all of the components of it so that you can see exactly why I rely on it so heavily in my Amazon business. But first, if you're new here, I'm Cassandra and I'm a full-time Amazon seller. On this channel, you'll find me doing my two favorite things and that is teaching and talking about Amazon so that I can help you to learn how you too can be successful selling on Amazon. So do me a quick favor and please hit that subscribe button because it means a lot to me. And now let me show you all of the capabilities in the software that I use the most in my business. First things first, everybody always wants to know the pricing. So you can do a monthly plan and it's only 39 a month, but if you elect to pay for a whole year, then it's only $29 per month. If you have a paid subscription, you have access to everything on Profit Guru. There is a free account, but there's not a ton you can do with it because you are limited to 10 searches per month. However, there is a 14 day money back guarantee and you can cancel anytime you want. You'll notice that the dashboard is super clean and user friendly. Right at the top, these are going to be the features that allow you to do the research in finding your products, no matter if you're doing private label, wholesale, or online arbitrage. And then when you wanna analyze the data on those products, that's when you'd use your FBA calculator calculator and your sales estimator. The bulk analysis tool is for those of you in wholesale. So this is where you can upload those catalogs from your brands and your suppliers, and it's going to go through it for you. Rather than having to manually search each product to Amazon, it's going to find the ones that actually bring back a profit. And then bundling ideas are for those of you that want to get into bundling because that can be really powerful for you to scale your business. Let's start with the products. The first thing you'll want to do is come down here to advanced filter. How you set up your filters is going to be determined by which model you're using. For example, if you're trying to find good products for online arbitrage, your filters are going to look different than if you were doing private labeled research for products that you want to improve on. So if I was doing some private label research, some of the filters that I would set would be the monthly sales. I want to find a product that I know is selling. Maybe I'd set this to only see products that have at least 100 sales. Now for the price, I would definitely want to make sure that the price point is high enough so that I'm actually getting a profit back in the end. So this shouldn't be any lower than maybe 30 to $40. Once you start going too low and then you factor in your Amazon fees, your cost of goods, now your margins are getting really slim. But me personally, I also don't want to go too high. While the profits can definitely be higher if the product goes for a higher price point, you're also at risk for really having to do maybe several returns a month, which then that'll start really eating into your money. So I like to go no higher than $150. Weight's going to be really important for a private label product too because if it weighs more, it's going to cost more to ship to you and to ship to the warehouse. So I don't want anything over, let's say, two or three pounds. Reviews is also important to me because I don't want to have to compete with a product that already has a brand that's dominating it and it has a ton of reviews. So let's go up to 50. The listing quality score is definitely important for private label because you want to find products where the listing isn't very good so that you you can come in with your new product and your listing will be better than the competition. This will filter up to a 10 for your listing quality score. So maybe we don't want to see anything that's higher than a six. And then hazmat, I always filter out no matter if I'm doing private label research or trying to find some arbitrage products because you do have to have a special hazmat training in order to sell these things FBA. So from those filters, now I have just over 2,500 products that I can go through and start looking at to see if this is something that I can improve on myself, manufacture it myself, and then brand it and list it. Now, if I'm trying to find products that I want to just buy for arbitrage online and relist, I'm going to change this up a little bit. I do want to jump onto listings that are good listings that I don't really have to improve on. So for the listing quality score, I might want that to start at six. So this way I'm not jumping onto any listings that have a lower score than that. For the price of the products, I will lower this because there's not going to be as much that goes into just finding an arbitrage item as there is to a private labeled item. Is sold by Amazon, I typically start with no. That's not to say that you can't make money by jumping onto items that Amazon's on, but you do definitely want to check 
and make sure that the buy box rotates and doesn't just go to Amazon every time. But I generally just try to avoid them altogether and find products that they're not on. If I'm just trying to find products in a certain category that I want to flip, then I can also filter that out. I like to do a lot of beauty and personal care. And then for number of sellers, if you're searching for products to sell, you don't want a ton of competition on them. So I also filter this so that there's no more than 15 sellers. Number of reviews, I don't want this to max out at 50 because I want to go on to listings that do have a lot of reviews. So maybe I would want this to start at least 50. So you can see how depending on which model you're using, your filters will change a little bit. And now rather than looking at products that show that they need to be improved, I'm seeing products that meet my criteria. And now my job would just be to try to find where I can buy them from at a low enough price and jump onto the listings. I can also hit any of the columns so that I filter them low to high or high to low. For example, if I wanted to see the ones with the lowest sales ranks first, I could do that. Sales rank indicates sales. So the lower the sales rank, the more that that product is selling. One other thing that I also do when I'm trying to find something to resell is make sure that there are at least two or three sellers on it. That's because if there's only historically one or two sellers, then number one, that's probably a private labeled product. And number two, that could also mean that the brand issues IP complaints and doesn't want other people to sell their products. So now what you can do is look through the list and find the products that you already see are selling really well. You can check the data on them. You can even go into the listing. And then what I do from this point is just run it into Google to see how low of a price I can find it for and then run it through the calculator to see if there's a profit. So that's how you can use the products tab. On to the brands tab. Again, we wanna see all of the filter options. And this is how you can find brands that are already selling really well on Amazon. This will specifically help you if you're trying to open up wholesale accounts. First thing you wanna do if you're taking that approach is find brands that have quite a few products. So we'll set that to 100. Average number of sellers per listing, same thing as before. I wanna set this to at least a little bit over one so that I can try to weed out the ones that are private label or IP complaints. Now I don't want to open up accounts with brands that their products aren't selling. So I want to see at least 40 to 50 estimated monthly sales as the low end. I really don't want to have a lot of competition on my wholesale accounts because then people are going to play that game with you where they lower and lower the price. And for that reason, we're going to say we don't want the number of FBA sellers to exceed maybe five or six tops. And I really don't want to have to compete with Amazon jumping onto my whole sale listings and taking away the sales. So I'm going to put that at a really low minimum and say that only show me the brands where amazon.com is the seller tops 1% of the time. Average product weight, the lower the better, we'll set that to two. Now for the average product price, this varies a little bit because if I'm looking for just regular products, I don't want them to be lower than like $20. But there is a lot of profit to be made if you're enrolling products into the small and light program. And in order to do that, it can't exceed $10. So if I'm trying to find products for the small and light program specifically so that there's less fees, then I would say that it has to be no greater than $10. Now I have a ton of brands that I know are selling really well on Amazon and I can start reaching out to them to see if I can open up accounts. One pointer for you is you're going to want to make sure that the brand itself is not already selling on the listing. So for example, this brand, 100% pure, the sellers are over here and I can see that that brand is also a seller. Now, chances are they're either going to dominate the buy box or they're not going to want to work with me. So avoid those brands where the brand is also a seller. For the suppliers tab, this is also a great way to really look at some brands and see if you can open up some accounts with them. But this isn't updated as much as the brands tab is. So I don't use this one as much to try to help me to find brands to sell. Now the sellers tab, this is really where it's at. There is just endless potential here, no matter which model you're using. I use this heavily though when I'm doing online arbitrage. I will set in my filters to make sure I'm finding other sellers that their products meet the same criteria as mine so that I can find some storefronts and just duplicate what they're doing. So if I'm trying to find some arbitrage sellers who I kind of just want to storefront stock them and take their ideas of what they're already selling and making a profit off of, I might say that I want them to have at least 50 products, but I also also want them to be comparable to me. I don't want them to have a huge volume of products because then they might have a ton of wholesale accounts or they just might not be doing the same model as me. So I might say that this can be no more than 
200. Number of brands, if they're an arbitrage seller and they're just finding things at Walmart and Target and then relisting it, they're probably going to have a wide variety of brands. So I want them to carry at least 15 brands. Now the ratings can be powerful too. If they have thousands of ratings, they might not be on my level and I might not be able to duplicate what they're doing. So I might set this to max out around 500. For the country, I put that as the US of A and then I search. Now those filters gave me over 18,000 sellers. Now what I do is I click and jump into their products, see what they're selling and see if I can find those and sell them myself. For example, let's check out Jasmine Beauty. They carry 200 products, 18 different brands. So we'll click on the products. And now what I do is I eyeball the price and the fees. So this mascara is priced at $26.99. And I can see here that the Amazon fees are estimated to be $4.03 for FBA fee and $4.05 for a referral fee, which is $8.08 .08 total approximately in fees. Now that means right here, this is the number that I'm focusing on. This is my net but this doesn't factor in the cost of goods. So now what I would do is I would search for this on Google and see where I can get it at the cheapest price. And that price would obviously have to be lower than $18.91. For example, if I could find this for $10 and sell it at this price point, that means that after the fees are taken out, I would be netting for profit $8.91. Something else that I really like to do with this is try to find specific people. So if there is somebody that is really big on YouTube, YouTube that I watch and I know maybe the state that they live in, I'll filter in the state and I'll see if I can bring up their storefront and see what they're selling. It kind of feels like detective work. It's really fun to try to find somebody's storefront. This candle is on sale this week at Yankee Candle. Now what I would want to do is copy the ASIN for it and plug that into the profit calculator and the sales estimator so that I can see how many units of this sell per month and then after all of my fees and cost of goods, what the profit would look like. So for me, I use this free little tool here in the ASINs there. But if you don't have that tool, all you need to do is come down to the product info on any listing and the ASIN is also there. So I would plug that into the FBA calculator and search. And why I really like using this calculator is because it also has small and light. So if your product falls in the criteria to enroll into small and light, you can see how that changes how much you'd be making. Now again, this product would not fall into that category because it is definitely more than $10. So we'll just use the regular calculator here. And now I can see what my fees would look like. Shipping to Amazon is about 25 cents per pound. Cost price for this candle is around $11. So now I can see what my net profit, my ROI, and my net margin would be for this product. Now that I know that I can actually get a profit back on it, what I'm going to do now is put that same ASIN into the sales estimator because I don't want to sell products that aren't actually selling. And here I can see the total number of sellers, 14, 13 of them being FBA sellers. So one of them is merchant fulfilled. Here's the estimated sales. And what I like about this is different calculators use different systems to generate their numbers. What this sales calculator does is it bases it off of the best seller rank because that's the best best indication of the actual estimated sales. So based on the rank, this product is getting estimated 486 sales a month. Now, if the buy box is being shared with all 13 of those FBA sellers, then each seller can estimate about 37 sales per month. Now I come down and I look at the data a little closer. I like to see if things are steady, if it's changing a lot. So back here, the price was $19.99 and quite recently it has risen up. Down a little lower, this is where I can check to see what the typical number of sellers looks like. So we have four sellers total, three sellers. So there's usually not too many sellers on this listing. Although right now there is quite a few more than this. So this is kind of surprising to me because usually when there are more sellers, that's when the buy box falls because people try to compete with each other. A little words of advice is not to play that game because then nobody wins. So if the buy box price is at $19.90, don't go to $19.89 because then somebody's going to come in and go to $19.80 and then somebody else $19 and now the price is going to fall, fall, fall. As long as you're within 2% lower or higher of the buy box, the buy box should be shared to you just evenly. So never lowball it. If the buy box is $19.90, 
set your price to that as well. So really all of the data that I need to make the decision whether or not to pull the trigger for a product is right here on the sales estimator. Next, we're going to the bulk analysis tool. This tool is specifically for wholesale sellers. So what you do here is once you open up an account with a brand or a distributor, you are going to input their information here and upload their CSV catalog. This saves me so much time. There are typically thousands of products in a supplier's catalog, and I don't have the time to manually look at each one and compare it to what's on Amazon. So this does it for me. Now I can set some filters here, make sure I'm only seeing products that have at least a dollar profit. And now I quickly can see which products are worth ordering in bulk. For example, this comb would be a good buy. I can purchase this for 48 cents from my supplier. I can see that the regular profits would be $1.41, which that's phenomenal in and of itself, but this product is light and it's less than $10. So if I enroll it into the small and light program, my profits are going up and I would make $2.01. So if you are into wholesale, this tool right here is going to be a huge time saver for you. Last but not least is bundle ideas. What you can do is throw an ace in here for a product. And if that product is in our database, it will show you what other customers are typically buying it with so that you can create a bundle. Hopefully you know by now, if you're familiar with my videos, that bundling is a great idea to minimize your fees and increase your profits. Now, for example, if I were to find this pencil refill on its own after the fees there's not going to be a lot of profit but if I bundle these three things together which customers are already typically buying together then you can see down here if I sold it as a bundle how it's going to really increase my net selling them individually the net would be $19.62 however all together in one is going to be less fees so the net would be more $26.18 now this does give bundle ideas in threes but that's not to say that you have to sell it in these three maybe you only want to bundle two together maybe you want to add on something else and make it a four bundle that's completely up to you and your research but this is where I like to come to get some of the juices flowing especially if I find an ASIN but I'm not really sure what to bundle it with I put the ASIN in here and it gives me some ideas so that is the gist of everything that profit guru can do and hopefully you see why it's my favorite Favorite software to use and I use it literally every single day in my business no matter if I'm trying to search for some wholesale products or if I'm trying to search for some arbitrage products literally every model that you're doing profit guru does support and the price is considerably low considering what the software can do before profit guru I had multiple subscriptions and these subscriptions were costing me anywhere from 90 upwards into hundred dollars each month so for those of you that have been asking me exactly what the software can do this video was for you and I hope it was super helpful again there is a 14 money day back guarantee so you really have nothing to lose all right that's all for today and I'll catch you in the next video